Hello everyone, welcome to Piano Insights. My name is Clive Swanson. We're going to be looking at the first of Debussy's two arabesques today. These are the first pieces which many pianists have their first encounter with Debussy in, and particularly the first one. And um, it's not an easy piece. It's not uh, like, you know, minuet by Bach, as a first Bach piece would be. Uh, there's nothing ter terribly elementary about this. It's really kind of at least intermediate, almost high intermediate uh, level piece. And to get the right effect in this piece, which is mostly of delicacy, there are no big moments in this music. It's very delicate music, um, happy on the whole, but not big. And the pianissimos are the biggest problem. I mean, there are, if you like to think of problems which need to be solved or challenges which need to be conquered, it doesn't matter which, but they are the biggest challenge, certainly, um, to get the pianissimos really translucent, get the right amount of pedal in different contexts, and just make the whole thing clear and well balanced. And even the very opening, which is single notes, is very difficult to get just perfect because uh, you need a lot of control for that. Let's have a look at the beginning. Got, it opens with just a series of broken chords, really. That. Now, if you play it a least bit loud, or too non-shaped, it doesn't have any beauty. I mean, it has, you know, it, it's interesting because of what he does, but there's no feeling of, of joyousness there. I think to get a feeling of joyousness, you need a feeling of sort of waves. Like if you're in a boat and you're being moved along on waves of sound. Now, what happens here is after these two measures of broken chords, which, by the way, you can help shape with the arm motions. If you, if you keep your arm stiff, it's still possible to do it, but it's more difficult. You have to think about it more. Whereas if you use your arms, you don't have to think about it so much because what happens is as you go up, the finger sort of the arm helps the finger <laughs> the arm helps the finger push the note down and this is a very key part of piano technique which everyone needs to know is that when you actually do this all you have to do is if you put your fingers on the keys and you and then you lift your arm suddenly the keys go down you don't actually have to press them down with your finger so very often you can just help the fingers go down simply by raising your arm so what he has here after those first two measures is a beautiful little counterpoint where you've got the bass held notes and you've got the whole thing opening out like that keep the middle pop voices very quiet this bass line crescendo you see and the the treble crescendo to sort of mini climax which is only about mezzo piano but anyway sort of a little climax here which leads us into the theme the main theme when we get here hold everything in the pedal beautiful that I hear so often everything cleared out it ruins it Yeah. 
actually finger have to figure out a fingering because I think I, I think I have the best finger. Well, I shouldn't say the best fingering because that's boastful. But the one that I like the best is this, where you've got the same fingering as you go down for each group of notes. Three, four, two, one. Oh, sorry, three, four, two, three, one. Four, two, three, one. Four, two, four, one. And then you land on that nice note with a thumb. It's got a little bit of a bite to it, that note. And the thumb is a really nice finger. So, so each of the highest notes is a four. And four again here. And four again here. So you're not crabbing, you're hermit crabbing, I like to call it. A lot of kids who haven't really figured out their fingerings, so you end up hermit crabbing down there. It's not good. You get much more control if you if you get used to this very comfortable fingering. And then you can just lightly, lightly... You have to get down to the key bed, otherwise you won't get any sound. But it does mark this pianissimo. So the more relaxed you can be, and you just drop the fingers down. It doesn't have to be too legato. I mean, if you're trying to squeeze the notes down. Doesn't, as long as you have the pedal down, just try to have very, very relaxed fingers, and then give a little bite to that one. Pedaling, use a fairly good amount of pedaling, because all of this, basically, it's all one harmony, and um, nothing's going to sound blurry, even with all those notes. Um, almost all the notes of the scale, in fact, are, if you leave the pedal down, all the whole, almost the whole E major scale can be heard, but it doesn't sound blurry. You do need to change the pedal on, I think, there and on here, but only slightly, just half the very quick pedal changes. You'll clear this out enough for it to be not completely blurred. You see, if you don't clear it out, you get this. It's a little too much. It's sort of... Whereas if you... So it's not... You've still got some of the left hand sounding. But don't clear it out completely, because if you do... You lose all this, you see. This is a very quick pedal change there. Now here we have um, poco a poco crescendo, and then on the next line, stringendo, which means get quicker. And then at the very end of the page, a writ. So it's quite detailed. Now the fingering here in the left, first of all, when you get to here, it's like a different instrument. This is harps, a very light instrumentation. It's very fluid, watery music. Here we get more of kind of like a clarinet coming in, something with a bit more bite, you see. More melodic. So you've got to get further down into the keyboard. It's not quite so watery here. You've got to watch the pedal too, because if you do this, it's a disaster. You can't, uh, you can't leave the pedal down like you do there. It has to be almost all of these. They're too close together and they're too far down in the keys to, to be good if you hold them in the pedal. You can't do that here. If they were up here or something, you could. If it's very high up in the keys, you can have longer pedals because they don't clash so much with each other. They decay quicker and, um, and it's more clear up there. Down here, it becomes very muddy, you see. So be careful with the pedal. You've sort of got to flutter pedal this, which means very quick changes of pedal. So for example, change there. Okay, until there, and then you have to change again on this one, I think, and then change again, you see, because if you go instantly, it's too blurry, whereas that's better, you see, so you're not going to be able to hold all the bass notes, so it doesn't matter.
becomes easier to pedal when you get to here because then you can pedal the harmonies just um, twice per measure. Change, change, change. And the stringendo and the crescendo shouldn't be overdone. You don't have to get tremendously fast and you don't have to get tremendously loud. It's all quite subtle. So here we have a nice little change subtlety because we've got this held note here. And very important, uh, that I'm, I messed up because I played that way too hard. Oh, I did that. No, it's got to be really better controlled. So, some of this arm movement actually does help. A little bit of downwards, a little bit of upwards for each of these. You need to figure out which one works best for you. Maybe down on that one, up on that one. Both downward and upward do work. So I would suggest that maybe. Now we're at a place where the key changes and we got slightly tricky left hand. Now here, what I would suggest is to try and recognize the patterns as best you can. You've got this pattern here where you've got the C sharp common to both to both um, chords and then what happens around it is that the other voices which are these slip up half a half step. So a good way to practice is to hold this and holding this you see it's a pivot around which that happens. Now after that one, and you can also do something like that also is a good exercise to get used to, to get the hand to understand the pattern more quickly. And then the next few measures, slightly tricky transition. Those three patterns a little harder. certainly the one to hold on, on these ones but they're not some of them are half steps some of them are whole steps see? this one goes down a half step these go down whole step so they're not quite as easy as it's not quite as straightforward as that but anyway there is a pattern here and I would definitely recommend that kind of practice on that one and then we have the same thing here This one's again one of these easier ones because you have that, so that one, and then that one. The the voices around the pivot note are all half steps going up. So that's an easy one to remember. And then this one, the F sharps, is still there. But the only things which remain the same are the outer notes. So you've got this and then that. So if you can't stretch it, um, what you'll need to do is, uh, there, there are no pivot notes there. So basically you, you would probably need to do something like this. And the reason being, if you're taking them in groups and clumps, um, I call them clumps sometimes, clump it out, block it out, some people call it block, blocking, is to get the hand used to what the pattern is. And the, the pattern here is, these stay the same. We don't have to look for the upper and learners. We only have to look for these ones. So these kind of patterns are really useful. So that's what I would suggest along there because it's slightly tricky and you, you also have to do some fairly subtle things with the right hand. You've got this theme. A little, again we've got this um, a little bite on the D sharp that we had on the first page. We have this again here in a slightly different context. Now, there's obviously sort of a sequence going on here. You have to do something with it, and I think each time perhaps a little bit of a diminuendo on them. They're coming down after all. You don't have to overdo it. 
But this is where the real subtlety comes, where he asks for a writ here. Now if we were to play it, one, two, one. That would be in strict time. What he has is... And then our tempo, something Schumann liked a lot. He did that quite a lot. In his arabesque, actually, he does exactly that. I don't think this is influenced by Schumann at all, but anyway, it's a similar thing. Typical early Debussy kind of feel to it. There's the, the piece called a, In the Boat, which has this kind of writing in it as well. You have these beautiful inner voices in this part of the keyboard just um, snaking around. And I don't think pedal is good here. I think you need to clear out the pedal. <laughs> like a little commentary this. Beautiful. This one is a little bit awkward. This I often see that what is recommended is to jump to four here. What I actually because this is such a large jump I recommend that you take a bigger finger, like third finger, or even the even closer second finger, before putting four over, and then put four over onto the F sharp, rather than jumping to four here. I think it's just much easier to go to, even both of these fingers is nice, for extra safety. I don't think so, I think three is probably the best. It's the biggest finger, and it lands, and come over with a sort of windmill, sort of shift it sideways and then and sometimes even if you find this stretch hard you can do this and you can take an extra note here you can do that or you can even put three here that's very comfortable two here and then three here the various things you can do I did slightly awkward to go straight to four there and have to sort of play all those very evenly. Um, it's much easier to go to there and then you can either put, go up to thumb here or, or go all the way. Either the, this is a little bit tricky but not all that tricky. Or you could go to thumb. And then... where to change really or you can even change a little bit later and then clear it out though to this octave here and then this thing you need a crescendo and then a diminuendo as well you see like that and then when you get to here that's a nice place to change I think clear it out on the second one and this one has to be strong enough because it, it's the first note of the next melody and we've, we've entered the, the middle part of the piece here, which is very different. It's mostly chords, but with voicings that need to be very, uh, very well controlled. See? That's already quite subtle. It's almost like Bach. It's chords, but yet with counterpoint as well. Uh, with some of the voices. Don't get too loud there. It's again, it's delicate music. You have kind of a flute theme here. So sing it out. 
fits at all. No, you don't want that kind of balance. You want that. Now this, not so. We're in full strings here. Forget the flute. Perhaps full strings here. So not, not so toppy here. You don't want... No, you want... More like that. Different orchestration. lines over these notes means stretch it out a little bit tenuto and be careful of the pedal minimal pedal on these it's very not watery at all it has to be really clear you see very clean but very legato not sound here. It's a different, different orchestration. You can hold the pedal through it a little bit too. Half pedal or maybe no pedal. You could get away with not changing pedal there at all. And then change here. I think that's perhaps a little blurry. You're half pedal so some of this still, you can still hear some of it you see. Don't clear it out completely. I asked for Mosso there. It just means a little bit quicker. Don't go hysterically fast or anything. This is a little bit quicker, that's all. I did a gap there, you don't need one. I cleared that out too much. out for the subtleties of, of, of dynamic markings that he puts there. Then it moves to C major. Very important to keep the, the top really singing out here because it can get so kind of just bombastic. You don't want that. Really, uh, you can actually, if you want, you can refinger this. But you have to be careful here. Lots of pinky power. Make sure that those really sing out. And that one too, if you go... It's a typical no-no. No, you got it. It's got to be really a lot of top, otherwise it's kind of ugly. pedal here at all. It's just wonderfully like woodwinds, like flutes and clarinets and oboes. So here, these inner voices... sure they're really really quiet they're so subtle the way he moves from C major to there you see and we have the same music until we get to this rather tricky variation of what we had before
things you can do with the pedal. I don't know. I think here we can have nice long pedals. For example, here. This obviously. All in one pedal. You might. You've got all that sounding, but it's absolutely fine. Just keep the pedal down. thing quieter it's a challenge here so this so this one is the loudest softer of pedal it goes uh, the ultimate wateriness here because you've got it all the way up here you can have long pedals you don't even have to clear it here you don't have to clear it there here i'm inclined to say you don't even need to because we're we've heard it before we know what it is we don't have to highlight it anymore and it's not leading to this it's not leading to that so this is not as important anymore it really isn't. And then here, all pe all pedals here. Yeah. I would say a pedal per measure here. Change pedal once per measure. The fingering here is tricky in both hands actually. I do that, and then four here, five and two, thumb. Change the four here. I would do that. See how you're changing fingers on the keys. Now, you don't have to do all of that necessarily, but I find that having experimented with a lot of things, if you remember to put four here, change to five and two. You've got a thumb here. And then from then on, just to change this to five and this to, to two is not problematic at all. And then you end up on three here, which you change to four, rest, and then rinse and repeat. It's very comfortable. It's not comfortable if you don't figure it out. If you don't choose a real fingering there, it's very uncomfortable. In the left hand, it's, it's kind of rocking motion. Because once again, that can be quite uncomfortable, particularly from here to here and you've got to get your fourth finger slotted in. If you rock, it's easier to slot the fourth finger in. It's much easier to play. I don't mean it's easy, but it's certainly easier because that's the hardest one to get in there. Once you've got that one, it's fine. But don't get out of position. Don't sort of do this and have your thumb hanging. Rock from side to side. And when you're practicing it, I would do. Concentrate on those ones most of all. So that your, your fourth finger is the one that's um, getting the most attention. Because that's the hardest one to put in there. So that covers the first arabesque, and I thank you very much for listening and hope to see you in future videos. Please uh, like, subscribe, and share with anyone you think might be interested. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.